It was early morning in 2001, September 14. They were waiting outside a delivery room. Upon the coming of the newborn, an unsettled middle-aged man hurried up to the sound and looked expectantly at the nurse who just came out of the delivery room and asked if it's a boy or a girl. Silence prevailed. He seemed to know the answer. It's the latter, a girl, and he turned away. I was the middle child of three with a gap of two years on either side. In a time when one-child policy was still being exercised in China, most traditional Chinese families, or at least mine, preferred to have male children, as they were the one believed to be more capable of inheriting a family. Since I had a pretty traditional family, the fact that I have an older sister and a younger brother put me in an extremely awkward position. This awkwardness is very obvious, as after having two girls, my parents wanted another child. Had it not existed, my family perhaps would have had only two children. Having a second girl was like having an extra girl or something. Whenever I thought about this, I considered myself as a burden in my family and wanted to dissipate this sort of idea by thinking about the good of my parents. We traveled around the world. They sent me to an exchange program in Australia, bought me Air Jordans, etc. They were so supportive of my decisions that maybe the whole thought of being a burden was just a childish exaggeration. Being ultra-sensitive, I knew my dad didn't prefer a girl, but he liked me. Yet, I could always detect things that disappointed me. For example, whenever my grandma came to visit, I always rushed downstairs to be the first to greet her. However, in the moments after the doorbell rang and the combination lock was opened, my dad always called my brother instead. Justin, come downstairs and say hi to your grandma. Once, twice, three times. This became a routine pattern that I could not interpret. And I paused at the banisters, questioning, is it all worth it? Here is what I mean by it. As a child, I would simply think everyone has partiality. Perhaps my parents' favoritism toward my brother was just a sort of personal preference. Like some people prefer Coke, others prefer Pepsi. On the other hand, I prefer neither. Despite that, I could easily notice the additional affection given to my brother in daily life. I got praises too when I received good grades or tutored my brother. For sure, Growing up as a middle child taught me to be ultra-sensitive. A sudden pause in a teacher's speech might signal dissatisfaction. A series of unsystematic questions conveyed a student's anxiety. An appropriate time for me to speak could be well determined by deciphering the positions of the corners of my parents' mouth. Aware of all these signals, I felt that I was pushed into an adult world, where all sins seem, seemed intact at first, could shatter into pieces a second later. Still, being sensitive about everything around me, although I sometimes avoid conversations and just listen to adults talking, I did, however, knew exactly how to respectfully respond and interact with people especially my families and teachers. But I did not know if I liked to be this way. I always thought that my ultra-sensitivity was only the byproduct of a surviving strategy, developed to help me better fit into my family and win some occasional praises for being thoughtful. Never did I think my detecting ability could actually make a difference in other people's lives until I came to TMI. Last year, I had a friend whom I shared a bathroom with in my dorm. 
I found that she always occupied the bathroom after dinner. So I told her, you really do have a fast metabolism. Upon hearing this comment, my friend expressed a bitter smile that others might interpret as a genuine one. However, I detected some from the lopsided curve of her mouth that this smile was a forced one. I saw something wrong in her flinging eyes, but I wasn't sure. So I asked her if she was feeling sick. She told me she was fine. However, her watery eyes and the accompanying sigh signaled otherwise and alarmed me. One day, when I came back to my dorm early from swim practice, she occupied the restroom again in between our rooms. Though half covered by the ventilating fan, what happened inside did not sound normal. By gut instinct, I interrupted her, and her dodging eyes convinced me that I did it right. After striking up several conversations, she finally told me about her depression as an outcast freshman and first-time boarder. From her incessant sobbing and the cuts on her wrist, I realized the seriousness of the problem and eventually convinced her to seek help from her parents and psychotherapist. Seeing her go from sobbing to telling her story, I was fortunate that Despite her slight gap in age, I could be someone she chose to rely upon. She said that she can't imagine what to do without me, and I'm like the older sister she dreamed of having. It dawned on me that my sensitivity could truly make a difference in other people's lives. Last year, my little brother joined me at TMI, where I took care of him and ensured that he had a smooth transition into the new environment. Back in China, I had never taken care of him seriously, merely because I knew there was someone else who would do the job. However, sitting in front of me was my brother, whom I truly cared about, and who also has difficulties in his life. I felt a pang of embarrassment, as I was supposed to be the older, responsible one. Only then I began to actively teach him math problems he didn't understand. After we worked, we'd hover over the rice pot, taking satisfying breath of his steam. Sitting down together, we discussed school and life, giggling. Proudly speaking, we'd both made improvements. Now, instead of thinking about those Additional affections given by my parents, I'm ready to become a good sister. Throughout last year, I discovered that there is an energy that always exists in me, which now empowers me to discover the hidden emotions of others, empathize with their situations, and console them to bring light to their lives. I now genuinely adopt my identity as a sister. There are so many things that happen to us that we have no choice over. At first glance, they are extremely unfair. Yet, given the fair nature of the unfairnesses of these events, should we look at these unfairnesses in different ways? We are no longer pure or innocent since the day we were born, as we bear identities that embody social definitions and expectations. Don't expect too much. Amid all the past and coming hustles, we have endless chances to discover and interpret things in a way that favors our position. As for me, I have grown from a quiet child to a still quiet child, but a more responsible sister and a more lenient daughter. Gone are the days of using my sensitivity as a defensive mechanism I started to use it as a tool to positively influence others around me, to be in tune with the needs of others. When I went back to China last summer, as I stood behind my little brother as always, anticipating to be hugged after him, 
My dad hugged me first, and my grandma welcomed me with open arms. With my own endeavors, I can say that I've come through these unfairnesses in front of you. So, for those of you who are the older child, or middle child like me, or the youngest, don't panic. Find out and rediscover yourself. Thank you.